we actually ended up watching this one documentary and it was about Hotel Cecil. Have you ever heard about that place? No. Bro, watch that shit on Netflix. It's so creepy. When my best friend passed away, like I saw him one day and the next day he was he was just gone forever. It was a it was a lot and I am still consistent, constantly healing from it. The one thing that I will never let go is realizing the value of life. When I was a kid, you know, I started when I was like 12 because right. people would call me fat and people were really racist where I was, where I lived right. in Texas at, at the time. So I just yeah. felt like I was like very ostracized and I was an only child and my parents were also very like strict and um, very judgmental. All right, boys, we got my boy. Today, today's gonna be a fun fucking podcast day because yeah, we're just chill. shooting shit today. Oh yeah. Yeah, this is one of my boys, Germ. What's germ, the up? Germ. I appreciate you for having yeah. me on the pod, brother. It means a lot. I know it's been a long time coming because we've been talking about this ever since we met each other. Yeah. And now we're finally running it. Yeah. Let's go. And then I have to do, I have a, a tad appointment after this, which is gonna be- It's gonna be exciting. so sick, dude. Yeah, bro, I'm excited to show you. It's gonna be so sick. Yeah. Bro. I don't even give a fuck about what people say. I uh, I've been having my appointment ready for August for me to get my fucking throat oh, jammer. Shit, bro. I'm Have you told them jammer. about like what you're gonna get? Or are you gonna no, keep it a secret? I'm gonna keep it a secret. Yeah, I'm gonna keep sick. it a secret. In fact, I don't even know if I want to like post it on Instagram. I, I feel like I just want to. It'll just start appearing in my photos. Yeah. People can. <laughs> and it just out of nowhere, you yeah. just got a new tat. That's awesome. Fuck whatever people think if they like it, then sick. Yeah. I don't know. I love tats. I feel like. Dude, I actually, when I first started getting tattoos, oh, actually, I was addicted, bro. Like, it was like every three weeks I was getting a new tattoo, and that's when I ended up just going crazy on this. And I took some time off because I felt like I was just rushing into them, mm -hmm. and, you know, I needed to think more about them before I get, you know, I get the tattoo. You know, I feel that, bro. You know? It's fucking hard to think about them. Yeah. It's bro, hard. It especially is. when you don't have, like, a... I feel like if you had a nine-to-five job, to be honest... Like you're somebody working in an office space, you could just like you know sometimes when you're just like bored of shit, you're just like for for an hour while you're on your computer, you like brainstorm some fucking yeah. tattoos. But then yeah. when you're like, I feel like when you're something like a content creator, you're anxious about always getting like content out consistently. Right. It's like it's like so much easier to procrastinate yeah, like things is. like that. I feel personally, hundred no, percent. I feel like because then you're on your own time, and then you prioritize things that like you feel like you want to do first, and it's just like you never ever get the tattoo idea out. Exactly. Never, bro. I feel that, bro. And that's why just, I was just like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna get this one." You know? Yeah. I've been I've been wanting this tattoo. I'm gonna get, and I think it's gonna be really cool, dude. The guy that's doing my tattoo, he he did Grimes tattoos. Oh, yeah. Fuck. Wait, so Grimes like a, the DJ or yeah, or Grimes the, the DJ. That's lit. Isn't that sick? So dope, bro. That's I'm sick. very excited. My guy actually, my guy has actually done a lot of celebrities' tattoos. Really? Um, some of them I like don't even want to say because it's like it's so funny to like it's like cliche. It's like oh, he did Daisy Keach's. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, like that. Yeah, but he also did a lot of other really fucking epic. Yeah. Not not saying that Daisy isn't epic, right? <laughs> no, that's awesome. No, she's she's that's epic. Dope, she's bro. epic. Epic oh, curves, yeah. but um. Uh, his name is a uh, Christ Christoph. Did he do all of your tattoos? No, no, oh. he hasn't done any of them yet. Yeah, because those are really well done. I like those. Thanks, a lot. bro. This one was from this guy called Ab Albert Dex. Shout out to Albert Dex in San Diego. If you guys like sacred geometry, that is the man for you. He does three D um, photography, like, like he does beautiful female portraits on top of sacred geometry and nature, and it's so detailed. And he has the best lining like the best really? fucking perfect lining and shading. And he, sh he can shade shades lighter than I've ever seen anyone wow. shade nicely. Like, like look at this yeah. shit right here. He has like so this is hands. dark and then check out that shit. Wow. Oh, that's just so like thin and light and stuff. What's the meaning behind those tattoos? I see um, them a lot and I think they're really cool. Thanks dog. So he's talking about the tattoos on my forearm. So the one on my wrist is the, it's like a, a morph of the Sri Yantra. Sri Yantra is like a circle, um, and it is a, a Hindu symbol that means uh, it's a representation of the man's journey to enlightenment. And then these ones, the two ones next, below it, are like two triangles, which can mean a lot of different things, but normally associated with one spiritual journey. Right. Um, and can also mean different things, whether or not it's pointed upwards or pointed downwards. Um, it can be a reference to masculinity and femininity, depending on which way it's pointed. Right. And it can also mean, um, it can also be a reference to elements. 
unfortunately, I actually forgot yeah. what the elements were, but this is more so for me, it's more so a representation of my spiritual path. Hell yeah. Bro. And then this one at the bottom is Metatron's cube, which is, huh, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I just took a whiff of my inhaler too. <laughs> <laughs> and then the one below yeah. is Metatron's cube, which is um, a symbol for balance of energy right. in the universe. And, That's uh, awesome, bro. It's just I something really that like I abide by, so I wanted to slam it on my forearm. That's so sick. I've been looking at this one tattoo, and I think they do it in the, like in Thailand, in their culture. They have these tats that they put on them, and they're like protection. I, I want to say protection spells. I really don't know. i got to show you after the pod. Um, but dude, they were so they're so sick. So it's like these two tigers, and then you got the temple. Have you ever seen those kind of tats? Um, I th- I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, they're dope, yeah bro, the temple but, tats at least. Yeah, I just I don't know. I feel like, you know, if you're gonna put something on your body, I I look at tattoos in a very like, I don't know. I, I look at tattoos like they're. And this is gonna sound weird, but I look at tattoos like they're sigils. You know what I'm saying? Like when you put, bro, some, I feel that. You know, when you put something on your body, like it's permanent. So it's like I want to put things on my body that like protect me and mm-hmm. you know are true or like true to what i stand by and you know uh, what i live by so right yeah it's very i mean to me. in my perception uh everyone like the way that you live life is simply like the perception of your mind and how you value certain things right right some people think that nothing fucking matters yeah whereas some people think everything fucking matters right i mean it just depends on what you value right yeah. what are your morals what are your values and so there's some people that just slam like pieces on their body because I mean I guess it's a representation that they don't give a fuck and like maybe some of these tattoos don't really mean very much there's some people who want their tattoos to mean a lot right I mean personally I I like to I just like to believe that anything I put on my body has a lot of meaning that's in accordance with my life and stuff and I think it's the same way that like you know moving forward in life I want to make sure that everything I do has meaning Right. Like everything I put out into the universe has meaning and helps people as well in yeah. their path so that when I pass away, I've at least leave, lived a meaningful life. You Have know? you always thought like that? Or like was there an awakening in your life at some period in time that, you know, made you switch into like this spiritual mind? Well, when I was a kid, also I'm the fucking interviewer, bro. But <laughs> when I was a kid, though, um, I like... When I was a kid, I was I was like kind of a, I kind of had a suicidal mindset. I just didn't give a fuck about anything. Yeah, I like I, I honestly felt like nothing mattered. I just like hated life and I didn't want to be alive. So, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, like thinking about that, how I was different when I was a kid. Definitely, there was a change somewhere. Right. Um, Do you I, remember that change, or was it just like it just started happening? To be honest, I think. Part of the change started happening as I started going to the gym, yeah. realizing I needed to just take control of my own life. Mm-hmm. So I started going to the gym when I was about 12. Oh, shit. Can I ask you, can I, can I, Germ's, uh, Germ's girl is here also yeah. visiting. Shout out, Alexis. Yeah. And uh, she is about to fucking crush in bikini. But uh, <laughs> I was just going to ask you, though, do you think you could do us a huge favor and shoot us a little like video, phone video at some point, Randall? Like whenever, just like, just, I'm going to throw it out on the story. Hell yeah. Sick. But yeah, I think uh, when I was like a bodybuilding, when I was a kid, you know, I started when I was like 12 because people would call me fat and people were really racist where I was, where I lived in Texas at the time. So I just felt like I was like very ostracized and I was an only child and my parents were also very like strict and um, very judgmental. Yeah over other people especially and over me of course too because you know their their vision for their child is like oh i want my child to be fucking perfect i want my child to take over the uh family honor you know yeah be a good representation for the family if he looks like shit if he isn't smart you know all this stuff normally asian parents tend to be ashamed right you know so <sighs> there was like a lot of pressure and i think i just realized like when i finally like just fucking snapped yeah got inspired by whatever shit that i found on the internet yeah you know z's and all the other legends for you it was john right it was john bro that's lit it'll always it'll always be john even to this day i still want to look like john you know yeah yeah the skywalker for real bro the skywalker the um uh bro i feel like i feel, I feel like you could be like anakin he's like Darth. me <laughs> yeah <laughs> that'd be dope bro 
<laughs> yeah. I see that. Fuck. Nah, John's awesome, bro. It's awesome. I don't know. Like, what I really, what, the reason, like, why I look up to him so much is, like, I mean, and I don't know if he still has it in his bio, but he was, like, not a role model. You know what I'm saying? And not, he's not saying, like, he's just a very, like, real person. Yeah. And when I first met John, it was, like, it felt like I've already, like, I already knew him, you know? Yeah. And it was just being able to conversate with someone that, you know, I highly looked up to, you know, for a, a good period of my life is, was insane, you know? And yeah, no, I'll, I'll always treasure that moment. It was so sick. And then I was the same night. <laughs> Dude, I can run you through that story, bro. It was so funny. So it was me, Caleb, and a couple of our other friends when we first visited LA. Caleb babies is. And we ended up leaving uh, Zoo Culture. We worked out there. And then um, I think it was John that texted us. Or maybe I slid up on a story, whatever. And then we asked John, like, what he was doing that night. And he was like, I'm about to go work out. And, bro, this was at, I think it was, I think it was around midnight. Yeah. And you, I, I, you know how John is, bro. Like, John <laughs> is nocturnal. Like, he does, I don't know how he functions like that. But we ended up meeting up with him, I want to say around, like, 1 a.m. at, I think it was a Crunch Fitness. And he pulls up in his car. And, bro, has, like, a, actually, I don't know if that's federal if I say this. And if it is federal, you could bleep it out. But he had, like, a massive bag of weed, bro. Like, a fucking... He just carried it with him. Like, it was just sitting in the passenger seat. And I feel like that's just very John of him. But, like, even when I first met him, bro, it, it, it was, like... he was It was already, like, he was my homie. Yeah. And Caleb, I don't know for why, he ended up taking, like... I think he, he was taking Gorilla. And he ended up taking, like, three oh, scoops Caleb of Gorilla. Oh, bro. Gorilla. And <laughs> I think it was on an empty stomach or some shit. But, bro, he felt so bad that night. He started throwing up and shit. That's why he got to take huge. Yeah, 100%. 100%. And um, it was after our workout. I think Caleb ate some... Oh, actually, no. It was during the day. Caleb ate some, like, I don't know, some food. Because we, we, we ended up staying in... Uh, it was... I think it was called... What was it called? Englewood? I don't know. It was a very, like... Englewood, yeah, okay. It was a very, like, sketchy area. Like, we definitely shouldn't <laughs> have been staying there. Um, but actually, we ended up being okay, so it was cool. But Caleb ate something that day, um, and then after a workout, I'm guessing all the stems hit him at once, and we ended up having to take brother to the hospital. So we went from working out from 1 a.m. to, I want to say, 4 a.m., and then from 4 a.m., we went to Denny's till 6 a.m. And then we're driving back home. Caleb needs to go to the hospital. So we didn't make it home till like 11 a.m. And that was just a typical night with John because he just likes to stay up all night, which is insane. But yeah, yeah, no, that was crazy. That was the first time I met John. And I'll forever remember that moment. <laughs> That's so weird, dude. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. John's a fucking character, bro. Yeah. I remember the first time I, I, it was like way back, man, years back, I saw in his story, he posted like getting back on schedule and it was like, four in the morning i was like wait <laughs> I, I was like really confused i was like wait did he just wake up or <laughs> like, is he going to sleep yeah i couldn't tell yeah, yeah bro oh he was like in the gym and i was like four in the morning and i was just like i can't he's i don't know <laughs> he's like an alien it's crazy it's crazy bro he's the only one i well yeah bro i don't understand like Tons of weed, no sun, no sunshine, no sunlight. He's like a vampire, bro. He's a vampire. <laughs> it's wild. It's wild. But I just remember having like very like deep conversations with him, and he did teach me a lot within like the time period of us hanging out. Um, it was really cool just to be able to like grasp all that knowledge from you know someone I really looked up to. That's dope. Yeah, he is a very contemplative person. Yeah. Like the first time I really had a real conversation with him was at, uh, I think it was Beyond really? Wonderland, like like maybe before, I don't know if it was like before 2019, it was before COVID. Yeah. <laughs> like the moment I met him, he just started talking my ear off about the industry and fake natties and stuff yeah. and like our shape yeah. and shit. And I was just like, but he was like going real deep. The guy right. was like high as shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, he was so big at the festival. Yeah. It was a good time though. Yeah. I was like, wow, this guy like... Like you, you may think of like, oh, uh, like this guy's very surface level or something. Maybe, maybe some people might. I don't know. I don't yeah. know how pe people judge on social media, but just looking at his like pictures, like, oh, maybe he just cares about appearance. But then you talk to him, and he's like, he's a very deeply contemplative person, and yeah. he cares about like the energy of people, and like he cares about like yeah. doing good and shit, you know. And no, as I feel like he just really wants having to help real people, connection. Yeah, you know? 
It's cool. That's the feeling I get from him when every time I talk to him. Same. It's dope. Are you going to be on this year? I don't think I am anymore because yeah. I'm probably moving. Oh. Yeah, I'm going to probably get my own place. Dude, that's awesome. Oh, have yeah. you looked? I'm, we're on the pod, but have you been looking at what area? Uh, I uh, I think it might be in between Sherman Oaks and Encino. Oh, okay, cool. Around that is area. that around? Is that close to here? Yeah, it's in the valley here. Oh, but, let's go. What was she? What was that? Oh, you live over yeah. there? Oh, no shit. Yeah, Fuck bro, yeah let's go, yeah. bro. Let's go. Neighbors and shit. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. It's like Sherman Oaks is like next to Studio City. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm still trying to find my way around like Cali, you know, or just LA in general. Right. I feel like there's just so many like different spots. There is so many different spots, you but know? it's crazy. I feel like you learn really fast. Like I'm yeah. learning at the speed of light right now. Yeah. And it's it's cool. I, like I think my place is probably going to be like seven, eight minutes from zoo or something. Dude, that's And then dope. I think because it's right next to that one... It's right next to the uh, like Bel Air like road or whatever right. the highway. Then I think it'll probably be like twenty five minutes to Gold's Gym Venice without traffic, which is also dope. Dude, that's clutch. I mean, yeah, bro. I love the valley. I don't know, like I was, I was thinking about moving into like downtown area, or and then I found out like downtown's not the move. And I was thinking about like yeah. Hollywood area. I also found out that was not the move. So yeah, like, screw it. Let's move to the valley, and I really, dude, I really like it. Like I really do. I do especially too. where we live, like it's so pretty. Like you get to see the mountains. It it just feels like we're in a whole different um area. Just like place in general, you know? That's lit. It's very chill, very down to earth. What area exactly? Um what, what is it, babe? Chatsworth. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. 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 I love so. the nature around up here. Plus it's like it feels very centralized. Yeah. Like you can go downtown or you can go to like Santa Monica or whatever. Right. It's about equal distance. Yeah. We've way. been, um, we've been going on hikes and like this, was it Malibu state park? Uh, Santa Monica. Santa Monica. Santa Monica. Yeah. I don't know. We've been going to like the state park and going on hikes and shit, bro. And just nature itself is so beautiful. Yeah. You know? Cause like, <laughs> I'm so used to, I'm so used to Houston where it's just like nothing, all like swampy flat land. Yeah. Humidity, like it's just nasty. And then I come here and it's just like, yeah, it's nice. It's a different world. You got the bro. palm trees and everything going yeah, on. Yeah, it's awesome, bro. That's what I was worried about actually leaving San Diego for LA. I was like, God damn, dude, I need my nature. Like San Diego is beautiful. Like I'm going to live in fucking disgusting K-Town or something. Yeah. But no, dude, I didn't realize there was this fucking beautiful place up here that was still kind of centralized that still has a lot of good nature. Around. Yeah, bro. Have you so. have you drove to Malibu yet? Um, I probably have, but... Yeah. Whenever you get the chance to go again, bro, like... Bro, the the mountains on that drive is it's just it's like it's like you're in a different world. It's beautiful. That's dope. I love it, bro. I love I love nature. Do you know Sony? Michael Sony Sherman? Yeah, yeah. I know I've never Boy. talked to Sony or yeah. but I know of him. Yes. Okay. He he lives in uh fuck where is it? Northwest, like northwest of of Encino. Um, oh, okay. I don't remember what it's called. But like you go up there and it's like the middle of it's kind of like the middle of nowhere because it's all far, far, far away from like the city and stuff. Right. But it is beautiful, bro. Really? Just mountains on mountains everywhere. Yeah. And that shit's awesome, bro. Yeah. He just I goes on hikes all the time. Like, I, I don't know. Sometimes I think to myself, I'm like, bro, like imagine what the world looked like, you know, before it was like industrialized. You know, like let's talk about like 500 years back, 600 years back. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, bro. It's just beautiful. It's beautiful. It is. Yeah. Hopefully we preserve it. Yeah, bro. me too, bro. That's what I was telling her. I was like, I hope they never build on like those like state parks or anything. You know? Yeah. Which I don't think they, I hope they never do because it's just like, I don't know. That itself is just awesome. You know? It's a complicated, uh, it's a, compli a complicated topic and one that I don't even feel like I have enough knowledge to talk about, but <laughs> I do like, all I know is that I, I, I hope for the best yeah. for, for this world and the environment, but I know for a fact that like things are still going downhill, you know, yeah. we're still, we're still using a lot of fuels that we haven't really found or really utilize enough alternative sources for. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's still a lot of shit going on, even like, uh, yeah. I don't know. I'm just thinking about random shit that <laughs> that isn't 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 the most optimal because I was thinking about how I consider myself white pill, but I would say honestly, I'm probably more of like a uh, like a gray pillish like type of mindset. Like I I hope for the best, and I have very positive like well, how do you say this? I have like a positive outlook. Yeah, right. That's like, good though. 
after like knowing and being aware of like a lot of the tendencies of the world and right. realities and stuff and like how we are tailored, um, how we are born, you know, yeah, like the masculine versus feminine is kind of a fact. Like a lot of the things that like maybe Andrew Tate might bring about is kind of ingrained in a lot of our, um, just in our genes and how, how we're built. But yeah. um, at the same time, I think the consciousness that we have as humans really makes us different, yeah. makes us able to have those choices to make the choices um, different than our tendencies would have right. us do, if that makes sense. Yeah. Right. I mean, bro, like perception is everything because for, I feel like with me, myself, like, my perception creates my reality. So if I'm constantly perceiving things in a negative way, my reality is going to turn out negative because I'm consciously thinking negatively, you know, compared mm -hmm. to like if I'm constantly thinking positive, you know, even if something bad happens and I have a positive outlook in life, like I'm still hoping for the best even after, you know, the rain kind of. I, I, I just know that like having a, it's just honestly, it's fact that uh, having a positive mindset literally drives you forward in a more beneficial way. It is like bro. it just does. It's just it's just how yeah. it works. I don't know how it works. I don't know why it works, but it does work. Yeah. Like you think in a positive way, you're going to be driven forward in a more beneficial way. It's very your true. life is going to be more like the things you're going to do, like things that are going to happen to you. You know, your, the actions you're going to take. Right. They're going to benefit you. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy, bro. Just like there's so much that ah, I don't. I, this I was having this conversation with her, but like we we're like very high one night, and I was I was like in our mind, you know, like how you know we all have this like voice in our mind, right? You know, and it's like there's a door in our mind that we're constantly trying to like unlock, and it's it's just I don't know, it's weird. I I, I want to get like deeper into it, but I just feel like it's. It's very hard to explain. I think I understand what you you, you understand I what I'm saying. I, I think I do. So <clears throat> the way I see it is that like you have this level of consciousness um, uh, about yourself and the actions that you want to take, and you can take control and over you can overcome a lot of your emotions and a lot of your tendencies. But um, we have this natural darkness as humans to basically just follow along with our emotions and um, do actions in order for us to survive. And these often tend to look like selfish actions, right? Because right. essentially what we are built to do is to survive, right? right. So someone's stronger than you, um, they're a threat, you know, you probably have some tendencies and some feelings towards that, right? right? But what if this is a really great guy and um, the threat isn't actually real, it's simply a perception of your mind because you just you're thinking that way yeah. then i think our consciousness is the special power that we have to overcome that and make a different decision and i think in making the different decision that's what makes us special as humans because yeah. we have that ability right versus if you're like a tiger you're probably going to kill i don't know you're probably going to kill the fucking deer because you're going to eat the food and you want to eat the yeah. food but like as much as people hate on them you know, humans, for example, we can make the decision to like be vegan if we wanted to yeah. because we wanted to like value their lives, right? It all depends on like what you value, right? Right. I'm not vegan, but I can respect, yeah. you know, what they do. So, 100%. Yeah. Same thing goes with like religion and morals and all this shit. Like, I think it just comes down to what you value and yeah. where you put the extra effort to be the person you want to be. Yeah. Because it takes extra effort. It takes a lot of extra energy. It does. And that's why a lot of people can't hack it. Right. They just can't, you know? Yeah. A lot of people will, uh, I like to say, um, the hate on social media, for example, a lot of people will create like maybe a no face Instagram, some random fucking Instagram, no pictures or anything or whatever, and just comment the shit that they fucking think right off the bat on other people's pages, even yeah. if it, is like the most hurtful thing ever, you know? And the way that I see that is this is their way of basically doing their own self-therapy. Because when you have pain, when you have like that darkness within you, you have to release it you want somehow, to it. right? Yeah. Otherwise, it's just going to continue to tear you apart from inside. Yeah. That's why we have like therapy. That's why we have a lot of outlets, 
like the gym. And for some of these people, whatever hole in their bedroom they're stuck in, just living life alone or something or not happy with what they have, their outlet is to speak it out into the universe through social media yeah. and like hate comments. And that's why you just can't take those comments to heart. Yeah. Because it's like, you don't know who this person is. You don't fucking know. They have no picture. You don't know their life. You don't know them. It probably has nothing to do with you, honestly. Yeah. It probably has everything to do with them. And so, I, I honestly feel bad for those people, bro. Like, yeah. when I, I like if I ever get a hate comment or whatever from someone that has an account like that, I j I'm just like, I don't know. I think to myself, I'm like, because I always like to, I always like to see it from other people's um, perspective as well. So it's like, and what's going on in my mind? I'm like, all right, like, what's this person going through for them to say something like this to me or like act this way towards me? Because um, I don't know. I just, I try my best to always have like, uh, I, I always try to look for the best in people. Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not someone that's just like constantly judging people. I always want to give people like the um, benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So and I feel like that's a good way to, think as well i, I mean yeah so it might fuck me sometimes and like but i mean that's just life bro life's always gonna fuck you i think so too man yeah you just gotta push through it i mean like i mean i'm just gonna outright say this because i like to stay transparent and i'm sure you understand how i feel too plus you haven't really had very much engagement so you've only had one but for example like i know that there was like a lot of hate and a lot of drama in the industry between like brad bradley martin and then some other people in the fitness industry, right? Yeah. Um, people in Young LA, like Sush Bra, all these people or whatever. Yeah. But I have never been a part of this. Like I've always like done all of social media, all of my shit away from anyone else, haven't collabed with anyone. I just did my own thing in, so in San Diego for the longest time yeah. until I decided like, fuck it, I want to move here because I want to like meet some new people, you know? Yeah. Um, and honestly, still from my experience, Brad has been nothing but fucking giving and kind to me yeah like the the reason why i even feel like comfortable having a new place is because he like basically explained his all his thoughts about like what areas he thinks are good and valuable and what areas aren't and why and stuff and now i know like oh yeah i want to fucking live in the valley like i want to live here because this is yeah. a great place for sure a hundred percent yeah um, i mean like bro i don't i don't know like i guess you're i I don't really, I don't care for like the drama and all that bullshit. Like that's just, that. how's that like, How that's not going to benefit me. Um, but like with a lot of people, it's like, that's how they want to, they see that as a way to grow their platform. It's just yeah. controversy, you know? Because people like negative shit. Yeah. And I, people will click on it. And like at the same time, it's like, bro, how long is that going to last? You know, like how right. long until you get tired of being like that, being controversial, you know? That's why I just... I try my best to just like stay out of that bullshit and just like just be true to myself and like my values and stuff. Cause I mean, bro, like at the end of the day, I don't, I don't care for like all the social media drama bullshit, you know? Like, yeah, dude. I, I, growing up, I was never like someone that was very into like social media, you know? Like I was very much, you know, outside of social media and, and doing like extracurricular activities or just like hanging out with my friends. But like I was, very rarely on social media until I started doing social media. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't know, I just, I like to stay grounded, you know, I, cause I know like, you know, this could be gone tomorrow. So it's like, why, why act like an asshole online? So, you know, if this is gone tomorrow, people are just always going to perceive me as an asshole if they never even met me. I don't know if that makes sense. It makes all the sense. Dude. But yeah, it does. Know. I just like to stay true to myself and, you know, I just want to stay grounded and humble. Right. I, I, I think you and I are on the same page yeah. because my perception is that like what I want to do is like I want to leave some goodness in this world. I want to leave a positive impact. And um, there's also some people that just want to like grow their following. And um, if the follow if, if they know that their following will grow immensely through putting out some negative content or some drama, some controversy, yeah. um, then maybe they might do it. But the way that I kind of see doing things like that is like is that how I want to be known? Is that what I want to create? Is yeah. that what I want to leave in the world by the time I die? Like, oh, I'm famous because I created controversy or I'm famous because I had drama yeah. or is it that I, you know, people know my name because, um, I don't know, I just, I helped transform some people's lives yeah. or something or I helped put out some information that at least helped someone from getting to a depression or something. Yeah. 
or realizing that his hormones were the res- like the resultant or no the uh, the cause of his um, mental state. I don't yeah. know, just something, something. No, hundred percent. So, and, you know, I, I mean, like, I guess we're on the same page with that because I mean, bro, I know a lot of. I'm not gonna say a lot of people, but I know a couple people that you know are very controversial as we were talking and they grow immensely you know they just grow a super large following very quickly compared to like some people you know they're very true to themselves very real to themselves in their community and then they might not grow as quickly as those people you know they grow in a very organic manner which in my opinion bro it's i feel like that's the best way to do it you know because it's not like you're you're not gaining followers for them to see you you know, beef with someone, you're gaining followers because they genuinely fuck with how you are and like your message that you spread or, you know, whatever you're doing. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like that's a, uh, I feel like that's a really good way to grow, you know? I think so too. Even, yeah. even outside of social media. I think it's going to be like, more sustainable. Like if you're just a very positive, genuine person and you're real to yourself and, you know, you stay away from all that like controversy bullshit. I feel like, I feel like life will move the way you want it to move. I feel like you're just gonna feel better. Yeah, that too. You know? Mm-hmm. Hundred percent, bro. I feel like if I have drama in my life, then it's just very I just like, fucking weighs you down. Yeah, bro. Like, why is it like, even it, worth it? It like takes your energy. I'm like, bro, like I don't, I don't care enough to be doing <laughs> this shit. Like I, and that's how I always thought. That's how yeah. I've always thought. Like even in school, bro, I was always, always trying to like stay away from like all the drama and shit because like I just. I just never saw the point. You know, yeah. I was always like thinking, all right, how is this going to benefit me? <laughs> you know, it's not. It's not. So yeah. it's like, fuck this. You know, I'd rather just not be in that shit. So, yeah, I'd never, I never. I mean, like, I don't know. I never understood, like, the that controversy shit, especially with social media. It's just very dumb. I don't know. I agree, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Same page. All right. Yeah. I want to backtrack a little bit. Okay. So we were actually talking about uh, sp- our spiritual journeys earlier. Yeah. Kind of wanted to ask you about yours. Mine? Yeah. Do you do you feel like you have one or do you feel like you have a... I, I definitely... Yes, I definitely did have a spiritual journey. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I want to say... It's a heavy topic. Yeah, it is. Because I'm really trying to... Because I, I mean, like, for me, like, it wasn't just, like, it didn't just happen overnight, you know? Like, I kind of, like, in, evolved towards this, like, mind mindset. Um, I feel like sometimes it just happens, yeah, too. that too. At I think with what... me, it was, I was just, it was in high school, and I was just very tired of the way I was living my life because I felt like I was just, my life was very, I don't know, I feel like, and I, I bet a, yeah, a lot of, you know, people around my age or even older could relate. Um, I feel like around that time or even when you're older, it's just a very, you're trying to find yourself. Um, And I thought I was finding myself, but in all honesty, I was just breaking myself down, um, doing the things I was doing. I was being very reckless. You know, I wasn't um, being the best version of me. And I was looking for an outlet and I ended up finding an outlet. I, I was dating this one girl. Um, but even during that relationship, you know, it was like it ended up becoming me and her like against the world, if that makes sense. Like it was just I lost sight of all the friends I had or you know, I didn't really care about anything else except just like being with her at that time. Um, and I invested all my time into her. And then we ended up uh, breaking up. And I feel like this is everyone's like typical like villain arc story <laughs> type yeah, bro. shit. But we ended up breaking up and I was just so I was very lost because I you know, I spent all my days with her, like I and everything, you know, I did everything with that girl. Um and then, you know, once that was gone, I had so much time for myself and that's when I just and I was in a very like I was in a, I was very hurt. I was very hurt. Um, and I was looking for an outlet again. And that's when I found the gym. And I feel like the gym really helped build character for me. And it really just helped me transform as a person as well. Um, not only physically, but mentally as well. Um, I just became more, 
I want to say mature. Yeah, because I was, bro, I was like, I was very reckless. Uh, and I think that also helped uh, transform me into like the person I am today, just like all those events. And then I ended up going to college, but I was a very, I was not good at school at all, bro. Uh, and I think I've told you this before. Like I was not, I didn't care enough. Um, like I just, cause I knew in my mind, I was like, all right, like the things I'm learning about right now, um, are not going to ben- benefit me in the future, which I'm not saying like, don't pay attention. Like obviously pay attention in school, you know, <laughs> too good in school, go to school. Um, but I was just, I don't know. I was, dude, I was always looking for a purpose, bro. I was always looking for a purpose in life. And I, I never, never in my life, I thought about, you know, like suicide. Um, maybe I've come close to that thought, but I felt like I just was living such a meaningless life for the longest time. And I felt so lost um, because I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. And I didn't really invest time into trying to find uh, myself. Um, and, you know, I ended up going to college. I went to community college because I didn't have the grace to go to an actual university. Um, and, you know, that's when I started doing like social media and my social media end- ended up doing um, pretty good at the time. Uh, and I was doing very like generic stuff, but I mean, it was working, but I wanted to help the kids that felt like me as well. Um, and that's kind of like what I based my whole social media. Uh, I, that's basically what I based my social media from, uh, just trying to help the kids who who (laughs) felt the same way as me. And, you know, I kind of said, fuck it. I dropped out of school and while I was, when I dropped out of school, my account was dying. Like I was losing followers every day. My TikTok that had like a quarter million followers, uh, got deleted. So oh, fuck, I had like I a very, that, bro. yeah, bro. <laughs> fuck TikTok for real. So I had like a very little glimpse of hope when it came to doing like the social media stuff, but I just decided to take the risk because like, bro, I was sitting in my I was sitting in my bed in College Station, Texas, you know. College where, Station, Texas, College baby. Station, Texas. And Aggies. And I'm not Vegan. I'm not bashing anyone that goes to college because like I mean some people, you know, like like we we're saying, like people just want different things out of life and that was just not what I wanted out of life. Um but I was sitting in my bed contemplating like what the fuck am I doing with my life? Like how am I benefiting myself and I'm not happy you know I'm I'm not helping others I'm not really doing anything that's worth my time Mm -hmm. so I said fuck it I dropped out of school to pursue this and I took the risk and you know it was very scary because I was it was basically I, I was like in a dark tunnel and there was a light at this this little like tiny light at the end of the tunnel I was just running towards that light and I was willing to do anything and I was willing to sacrifice anything to, you know, make that light even brighter. And, you know, now I'm sitting here and I don't know, I feel just very appreciative of, you know, the whole journey, even with all the pain that, you know, that journey had, it helped me become mentally stronger. It helped me become the person I am today. And, you know, I just kind of want to spread that message that, you know, like, if you're feeling lost right now or, you know, you don't really know what to do with your life, um, I'd say, like, the best thing to do, bro, is just really invest more time into yourself, you know, and really try to find out, like, what you want from life. And it's not easy. I mean, it might take a year. It might take two years. It might take five years. You know, it might take a lot of time. But I feel like if you keep just trying to, you know, find that purpose, you'll eventually will. You eventually will find it. I'm, I feel like I don't know if I just blabbered. No, bro. <laughs> that was that was that was perfect yeah. because uh, that was that was exactly what I I had in mind too. And I just want to like, I just want to add to that. <clears throat> if you feel like what you're doing is not enough, if you feel like there's something more out there, there is. Yeah. Like there is something more out there for you. Mm-hmm. You just have to take the leap. That's right. And true. the fuck the fucking thing is that without you taking the leap, you will never find that. That's true. Without you taking flight and trying to find whatever it is in the clouds, you'll never grab it. And it it literally just requires you to make that choice. Yeah. Right. But I mean, everyone's always anxious. Everyone's too scared to make that choice. Yeah. Um, and it's the scariest thing. It really is. Yeah. But 
you just have to fucking do it. Yeah, I mean, bro, for because what? we would not be here. You and I would not be here right now if we didn't take that. Leap. If we didn't just take the leap. Yeah, and that's so awesome. That's so awesome, bro. Yeah. I, I don't know. Right. It's like how I like to think about it is like, bro, your life is like your legacy. Right. And from what we know, we only have one life to live. So it's like, why not live this life to the fullest, bro? Why not take the risk? Why not, you know, just jump, just fly, bro, fly. And you didn't even think of anything of your life. You didn't think you were going to get anywhere, bro. Like you didn't even like, you felt like you were shit in school. I thought I was going to be anything, dude. I didn't think I was going to amount to anything. People used to call me fat and stuff. I literally thought I was just going to be some ostracized, fat, chinky kid that nobody ever wanted to like socialize with or be friends with. I thought I was never going to amount to anything. I played six different instruments that my parents made me play and all the sports. And my parents would tell me that I couldn't be a musician because I wasn't good enough. And I, I would have to go to, I, like I wasn't good enough to like go to Juilliard. I didn't try hard enough. Um, I wouldn't be able to be a tennis pro because I wasn't good enough at that because I was always slacking off and I didn't do anything. Like I was always constantly told that I wouldn't amount to something. And you know what? That was our fucking driving force, bro. Yeah. That was our driving force to do something of ourselves. And I still didn't think ever that I would ever do anything that I wanted to do. I never thought I would amount to anything. Um, I just literally tried to get a mechanical engineering yeah. degree in order for my parents to even like think something of me. Yeah. You know what I mean? But now I look back and I'm like, wow, because I made that one leap, because I made that one single leap and I was just like, fuck this. I hate this job. I don't want to do this. I want to show my family that I am something. Yeah. My life has completely changed. Now I'm in LA doing whatever I love to do yeah. just because we made that leap. You got to live for yourself, bro. You know, you got to make yourself happy because like at the end of the day, you know, you're the one that's. You know, you're the one that's living with yourself, you know, like everything that's going on in your head. You're the only one that knows those thoughts, all those things, you know, unless you express them to someone and you can never fully express everything that's going on in your head. So it's like it might sound very selfish. It might sound very narcissistic. And I'm not trying to sound that way at all. But I'm just saying, like, do it for yourself, you know, Yeah. because if you're constantly trying to please people, you're never going to please yourself. And with me, like, bro, I I was always told since I was young that, like, same as you, like, I'm never going to really amount to anything. Like I was always very, I always had to prove myself and I'm glad it was like that because it helped me become the person I am today. It helped me have this like mentality of winning. Like I constantly want to win. I constantly want to do something great. And you know, my, my biggest fear is I wouldn't like, I, I was thinking that my biggest fear is failure, but I don't necessarily think my biggest fear is failure. I think my biggest fear is not I think my biggest fear is not really f fulfill like the fu not having fulfillment in life, you know. And I find I find fulfillment when I'm you know doing things like this or you know creating impact in someone's life or you know doing something major, doing something that is very risky and you know. But the thing is that that makes me feel alive. Those feelings, even if they, you know, anxiety, all that stuff, you know, it might be a negative feeling, but dude. I fucking, I, f I feel alive when I feel those things, bro. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Yeah. It's like my driving force. You know, I just, I, I, I don't know. I try to look at the, those negative feelings in a, in a positive way. Like how can these negative, negative feelings benefit me? Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy, bro. It's crazy. They're absolutely driving forces, bro. Yeah. If any of you guys have ever been through anything, any negative situations, any come downs, any um, withdrawals, you have it. Mm -hmm. Like you have it because you made it out where a lot of people haven't. Yeah. You made it out where people couldn't make it at all. Yeah. So if you did, then you have the power to literally make whatever it is that you want to do in your life happen. All you got to do is take that first step. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about how it's not going to come right, right away or the anxiety that's going to come thinking about how maybe you'll never achieve it. All you got to do is move forward towards yeah. it, whatever it may be. And the thing is like, you don't even have to know what it is, mm -hmm. but if you at least take the step out there to start searching, like allow yourself to be out in that space. Yeah. Something that I, like, I like to compare it to is like, if you're trying to find a partner, right, you can wait for them to come to you and that's fine. You know, sometimes things will just happen. But the thing is, 
if you're not out there in the space, if you're not out there in a social place where you can meet people, if you're not like maybe in like one dating app, you have not put yourself in the space to receive what the universe can give to you. Yeah. And you must put yourself in the space to receive. And that takes stepping out. Yeah. All it takes is stepping out. And we're so powerful as human beings. I feel like, I don't know, once we, like with me, I mean, I'm, I want to I wanna master the power of my mind. And I know it's going to take a while. But I know that if you truly believe that you're limitless and if you truly believe that you can accomplish anything, it might do it. And I'm, I'm not saying it's going to happen. You're not going to accomplish, you know, whatever you want to accomplish, it might not happen the, the next day. But eventually you will win. Um, and I feel like if you truly believe that you're limitless, you will be limitless. I don't know. That's kind of how I, how I like to think now. And I feel like that's really helped me as a person because if I'm constantly thinking, okay, you know what? Fuck it. I can do this. You know, I can be better than this, blah, blah, blah. Then, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be. Yeah. I got a question to go off of that that someone actually wanted me to ask you. Can you explain your motto? My motto the shit that's on your new t-shirt, bro. Oh, what is real will prosper? With me, I, all right, so I didn't, I, I want to first say I didn't create that motto. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But It came from, uh, his name was XXX Tentacion, also known as Jose on Freud. And he was one of my biggest inspirations growing up because, I don't know, I felt like I really connected with him. Even if, like, I didn't know him at all. And I, I didn't know who X was. Um, but just like being able to learn about his message and you know people portrayed him in different ways but i always i always try to like i said look for the positives in people um he always preached that and that when whenever i found out about that quote like it really stuck with me and for me what what is real will prosper really means is if you're true to yourself and you're true to you know what you stand by what you live by um, it will, your life will prosper in a benefiting way. Um, I don't think, because in all honesty, bro, you know, God is for me, like uh, this is just how I think God is never putting things in your life to, you know, knock you down. He's putting things in your life to make you stronger. Um, and that's kind of how I like to think about it. It's just like, if I'm true to myself, no matter what is, what life throws at me, if I'm true to myself, I will prosper. If that makes sense, it makes all the sense. It makes all the sense, bro. So that's yeah, that's what it that's what it means to me, and that's why I I got it tatted. Yeah, hell yes. Yeah, that's why I tell people like if you're feeling something different, if you're feeling like your fulfillment lies somewhere else, be true to yourself. Yeah. You know, don't keep living this path that's a lie to you. It's true. This bro. path that doesn't align with you. Yeah. Because you just step in that space that's that aligns with you, that fulfills you, that is you. It's going to prosper. Yeah. You will prosper. It's true. I promise. That's what I'm saying, bro. Like, live life for Just you. got to do it. You know, be your best friend. Be your best friend. Be, you know, don't, don't try to live your life for someone else. Don't try to, you know, go out your way. I mean, no, nah, I'm not, I'm not going to say that. But, like, obviously, be a great person. You know, stay positive. But, you know, don't do something you don't want to do to make someone else happy. Um, and I'm not like, like I said, I'm not trying to sound narcissistic at all. I'm just saying like, you know, make sure that, make sure that you're happy. Uh, if you want to support the podcast and the funding for the editing and everything else, as well as finding new guests, um, you can use code Nile for young LA clothing and huge supplements as well, which is the supplements I take with the protein pre-workouts, et cetera. And then if you want to support germ, also code germ for the same code young LA and huge supplements. Go germ. <laughs> and uh, finally, if you're feeling symptoms of low T, I would recommend you get your blood work done somewhere in any HRT clinic. If you do want to use my HRT clinic, which is bodybuilding friendly, that's Transcend HRT and the link is in the description. And they offer a lot of things ranging from um, PCTs, TRTs, peptides, healing peptides, um, um, growth hormones, cretagogues, and more. Oh, things for erectile dysfunction and hair loss. Bro, I've fucking... Like, there's just the... Like... The I, I will have like I'll have a few girls here or there that I'm at least like talking to. Yeah. Not necessarily in anything deep or whatever with. Um it, you know, comes and goes. Sometimes something does happen, sometimes something doesn't. Yeah. Um there is someone that I'm kind of speaking with right now in 
I don't even I don't even know where it's at. Honestly, I feel like you have so much going on. That's you know? exactly the like thing. I feel like for you, it's just it's hard to make time for. Because bro, I I like that's the thing. Niall works extremely hard. Like I'm not even joking. <laughs> Every time I see him, he's working. It's crazy. Um. So yeah, bro. Like I don't know. I mean, unless you can like make time for someone like you know your significant other, I don't. I know. I mean, that's what I'm trying to learn. Because that was my biggest issue with my you last relationship. I think I do. Yeah. For what? <laughs> like, like, why do you want to grow? Well, I, I want a family someday. Yeah, I want a family someday. Bro. Hell I want yeah. a fucking family. I just, I think I need to get comfortable with like, I, I think I need to get comfortable with like making some time for myself and my partner. Yeah. Um, I think that's where my next goal needs to be. Yeah. Cause right now, like the phase I'm in is kind of just like work, 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 grind, grind, grind. Like I'm still in my twenties. Like I want to fucking like, I want to create myself an empire by the time I'm in my thirties. I feel that like bro. I want to be situated. You know oh, what I'm yeah. saying? And I feel like when I'm situated, I'll be ready. But that's also the thing is sometimes you can't always be, wait. you can't always be waiting. Yeah. You can't always be waiting for like, oh, like I'll do it when that happens. I'll do it when this happens. That's not how life works. It's true. <laughs> life it's just true. fucking happens. So honestly, I I do need to continue to just keep putting myself out there and then um, you know, maybe something will it'll just happen when I don't know, yeah. you know? And that's what I'm thinking. But as of the moment, I am currently struggling to make time for even these people. So that's why I'm I don't know if it's yeah, bro. At uh, the same time, like, oh, I mean, like, I don't know if you want to go into too much detail, but it's like, do you want to make time for those people? <sighs> or do you want to focus more on, like, what you're doing right now? I do want to make time for these people. Yeah. But at the moment, I see myself only making time as in, like, like once a month. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which isn't very much when yeah. it comes to dating. Seeing someone once a month yeah. is definitely <laughs> not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but hey it keeps him on a dose yeah. uh, it's just <laughs> funny because it's like back in the day i used to work so hard in college to like get these girls i was like i was like uh, always talking to my fraternity brothers i was like look at look at these snapchats <laughs> I, have like, I have like 12 snapchats from 12 different chicks <laughs> one for each day of the week bro uh, uh, one for player, each study bro. break and then now now i'm like i realize like how fucking silly i was now I put literally zero effort and I feel like more comes because I've created something of myself for one. Yeah. Right. Cause unfortunately that's how, you know, some, you know, that's how it, the world works. Like status matters as a male. It's true. It, it just means that you have the resources. But the second thing that's very, very important that I think is even more um, of an impact of what I, what I'm doing now that benefited my love life is that um, my time is valuable. Right. And that's because I know how to spend it on myself now. Yeah, I have aligned myself with what I find is real to me, right? And now I am prospering in my passion and yeah. me. And because I am, I know exactly where to put my time. And that time is very, very, very valuable to me. Right. Now it is, the demand is higher because the supply is significantly lower. And so I'm seeing a lot of, I guess, females right. demand that time. Yeah. Of which I can't give. And that actually has made it easier for me to date. Like I don't have to put any effort in. Yeah. Like, I mean, obviously I put effort in to care about the other person, right. but I don't have to like go out there and be like, like DMing girls nonstop. You know what right. I mean? I don't have to like keep doing this shit to like try to like get a date or something. Yeah. Now it's like, now it's like I, I don't have enough time yeah. for the amount of dates I could be having. I think you need, you need a girl that's going to help you. In, in like your career, you know, you need a girl I would that's love that, bro. motivate you, that, that's going to push you, that's going to, you know, like whatever you need help with, she's, she's your right, like yeah. right hand, you know? I feel like that, that would be amazing. I mean, that is what I'm looking for is yeah. I, I'm not just, I'm not looking for a trophy wife. Yeah. Like, yeah, appearance is great. I love appearance. If she's if she's hot. She works on her booty, you know. Yeah. She's a bikini competitor or something, a fucking wellness competitor. That'd be sick. But yeah. but uh, you know, looks only last forever. And what I want is a I want a best friend. Yeah. You know, I need I want a partner, and uh, I know that because I've experienced that before. And people will fucking talk shit. People will be like, oh, like you shouldn't be friends with your whatever. 
Like, look, I'm not going to be like, I'm not going to be running back to my ex when I find someone that's a, that's a good partner for me because there's a reason I left, right? Yeah. But the fact of the matter is I know exactly, I'm going to put this out there. I know what's wrong with me right now. I know what I need to fix. And that's, I'm way too focused on my work. And that's why my open relationship, my last relationship that was four years, that was like the most beautiful thing I've ever experienced is now no longer in existence. It's because I was way too absorbed with my work. And when she found another partner in our open relationship at the same time, yeah. she and she fell into this pit of a split personality. I was the one, I was the guy that she had all her memories all her hormones, just all her fucking shit just tied to for the last four years. Everything that she knew as, you know, in a fucking relationship. Seeing, like, like we, we were even talking about eloping several times. Like, there was that part of her. And then the other personality was now seeing a new guy who would take her out on dates, take her out to the festivals that she wanted to go to, take her out on events that made her feel alive. Yeah. Basically, the honeymoon phase, but, like you should be having with your partner, which is you guys should always consistently keep trying to spice things up and have exciting dates and events with each other throughout the rest of your life. That's how you continue to have a beautiful relationship. Just continue to value that person the same way you valued them in the beginning. Yeah. Always. I didn't do that because I was too absorbed in my work. I was like... I was like, fuck, I can't. Like, she would be going to bed at like 10 p.m. and I'd be like staying up till like two in the morning, like on my computer editing or doing some other work because I was like, oh shit, like I can't, like if I stop editing, if I stop working, I'm going to lose everything I have. And um, that just, it wasn't working out, you know, because yeah. she'd be going to bed alone and she'd just be there in the space, but we wouldn't actually be having quality time. Right. Like the time was not quality. It was not. I was neglecting her. And like, if it was a closed relationship, that would honestly really fucking suck for her because then it'd be like, what the fuck is she supposed to do? Is she, does she need to break up with me? Like, what, what is she supposed to do? Instead, the universe acted on it for me. And in this open relationship container, showed me what I was doing wrong. Yeah. You're strong, and had bro. somebody else take her from me, You're which strong. is my fault. So, no, I don't think you should put the blame on yourself, bro. Because I mean, like, dude. Yeah, but I, 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 I can't take reason, responsibility. Bro, you know? Shit happens for a reason. But th- I truly believe everything that happened is because, like I said, it did. Like because I need to take responsibility for my actions, and I know I could have done better. And so now, because of that, because I am taking ownership, I now have the power to be that much better partner for my next partner. Hell yeah. And I know I'm going to be a sick partner. Fuck Because yeah, I know bro. exactly what to do. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, you're awesome, bro. You're awesome, dude. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Hell yeah. You're Thanks, the prize. Dude. You're the trophy. <laughs> <laughs> you're the trophy. Thanks, dog. That's awesome, bro. That's all. And, and it's good that you you realize all that. You're very aware. You know, you're... Eh, I, think that's, I think that's a really good way to be, you know? Thank you, bro. Instead of trying to create um, excuses and all this shit, like you, you know it you did wrong or whatever the fuck and you know you own up to it you're very aware of it and you know now your next partner is gonna be like holy shit this guy's awesome <laughs> I, hope <so. laughs> I hope so oh yeah dude Thanks, yeah. i think that's that's our special power though that i was talking about as humans is our consciousness our ability to make that decision yeah um not have to like you know, just make excuses because that's probably what our ego wants to do right is to mm-hmm. make those excuses to make us feel better about what happened. Yeah. But I think our ability as humans to evolve is lies in our consciousness to make the decision to do the opposite. It's true. Is being like, oh, actually, I did fuck up here. Let me take control. Let me take uh, ownership of that and make a different decision than my body wants to. Yeah. A smarter decision than my body wants to. A decision that will make me the person I've always wanted to become, the king yeah. I've always wanted to become. That's true. Yeah, and I think that's that's how we can evolve ourselves, 100%, for sure. 100%. And I think that's that's one thing I want to like let people know is like if they can like look back on their lives and I'm so sorry, <laughs> <laughs> if if they can look back on their lives and figure out um, maybe places that they can improve, taking that ownership of something gives you more power. It is it is truly empowering, and that's how you evolve into a better human is by saying that you were wrong when you were wrong or realizing that you were wrong when you were wrong or 
You know what I mean? Like yeah. just really, oh, not really seeing shit, the you know? places that you can improve. Yeah. And I mean, that, that is how you improve. You know, you, you have to realize the mistakes that you've made and, you know, even the failures that you've had in your life. You know, once you are aware of those failures or, and you dissect it, you know, the next time you try to do something that's similar or, you know, something that might not be similar, you're going in knowing what not to do and what, what to do, I think. That makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> I keep yeah. saying that. For, yeah, <laughs> keep yeah. Saying that. Is that no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was well said. Yeah, you, you you have you have the knowledge of like the path that you want to take now. Yeah, and that's a that's a big step, bro. It is it's a big step from not knowing. And the thing is, bro, life can always throw you curveballs because I mean, there's always yeah. gonna thing, there's always gonna be things like outside of what you can control mm-hmm. that's gonna like, you know, that's gonna like maneuver, you know, the way that you're trying to move, but. I don't know. I feel like as long as you're adapting and you're evolving as a human, um, you're constantly going to be growing and Sorry. becoming the person you were meant to be. Yeah. That's why my boy is about to, <laughs> about to be real and prosper with his new fucking sick ass tattoo. Yeah, dude, I'm fucking stoked, bro. I'm stoked. <laughs> I have to go, bro. It, the thing, the only thing is like where I'm getting tatted is pretty close to Skid Row, which I've never been. Oh before. shit, bro! We actually ended up watching this one documentary, and it was about Hotel Cecil. Have you ever heard about that place? No, bro. Watch that shit on Netflix. It's so creepy. <laughs> oh god, it's so creepy. Like I don't know. I was telling her like I kind of want to visit it just to like yeah. get a feel for the energy that it holds. But I don't know if I should. <laughs> I don't want that energy to be carried in. You know. Fuck, dude, that's scary, man. I don't like those things, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. That shit's creepy, bro. It is. Do you believe in like the supernatural? Uh, you know, I don't know, dude. I believe in I like I believe in spirituality. I believe in energies. Um, I believe in dark energies. I believe in negative energies as well. Um, it depends on what your definition of supernatural is, that's right? How I am. Like, I believe like God is also the universe. Yeah. For example. Yeah. If you've heard of that, like God isn't essentially necessarily a man in the sky. He's not actually like a human in the sky, you know, he's, he's a lot more than that. He's yeah. more than our, our, our minds can comprehend. really comprehend, mm-hmm. right? He's a completely another dimension. If you guys have ever taken DMT, then you'll know that there's a fuck ton of dimensions out there that we don't understand. Have you taken it before? <laughs> yeah, I've taken I've DMT. Taken it. I've DMT is that. crazy, bro. I bet, bro. You explode into so much, dude. It's like, it is literally another dimension. Really? Like it's multiple dimensions that just don't make any Was sense. Was it scary? Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, it depends on what kind of my what, what kind of place you're in. So I've had three different types of DMT experiences. One was one was literally heaven. One was literally um, like a purgatory. It was weird. And then one was literally hell. That's my interpretation of these. Not necessarily like actually, but it was fucking beautiful. So, um. Which one do I want to start with first? So uh, start with hell. Start with hell. Yeah. Start with the bad. Yeah. Start okay. With bad. Okay. Well, purgatory was a little weird because um, I think I think that was uh, I wasn't really taking care of myself and I kind of just wanted to take DMT because I wanted to take it again. Yeah. I wasn't so passionate about it and I think that's what put me in a really weird kind of trip. Um, and I I th- I think. That one, I, I saw some strange things that I can't really comprehend. But the hell, the hell was, um, it was late at night. We came home from a party. I was in the best mindset because obviously it's very late. I'm yeah. tired. We came home from a party. So I've been on other sub- substances. Right. Wasn't taking care of my body. And I decided that I wanted to take DMT again. I just felt like I wanted to because I wanted to feel it. Not because I was excited about the experience that it would offer me. I just wanted to feel it. Like I wanted to like, basically like when you take a drug because you want the feeling, right? Which is stupid <laughs> in, in regards to especially a spiritual substance such as DMT or something that's that intense. Yeah. And so what happened was I took a pen and I was like, okay, I remember the bong rip is supposed to be a lot harder than the pen is. So I'm going to turn this pen up to full high voltage and take three big ass hits to emulate the bong rip. Little did I know, the voltage definitely wasn't probably what it should have been because I fucking fried my brains out smoking that shit on those three hits and I exploded into a universe 
And bro, hell was not pain for me. It was not fire for me. It was a complete lack of control. And it was just utter chaos. It was, my mind was going crazy. I was going into some sort of psychosis. And I was just seeing, I was seeing like, it looked like the layers of Dante's Inferno, just layers of like, like stick figures, like with their heads like falling off and like really creepy weird things that didn't make any sense. And like, like fucking just like, like a balance of weights and like, like things like people and things were doing things that didn't make any sense. They just didn't make any sense. Like, why are you doing this? And how is this happening? Like, it didn't make any sense. And it was in this fucking multidimensional, like whatever. And I was, I was engulfed in it and I was just seeing it like, pass through my mind at a thousand miles per hour and I couldn't make it stop. And my, my body temperature started rising, 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 rising. And it was super fucking hot. And my heartbeat was going so fast and so hard, bro. Yeah. Like, and my ex was there along with a couple of my friends and she was feeling my heart and feeling my skin. And she was like, he's, he's so hot right now. He's heating the fuck up. And I was freaking out. And I, I like, I was freaking the fuck out, bro. The next thing I remember, I just remember like, I was like saying help and I was like holding her hand and there were, and she was like trying to console me saying like, it's okay, it's okay. Take deep breaths or whatever. And then the next thing I remember, I just like, just told myself to like, let, let it be. And after like five minutes to 10 minutes, it slowly started to die down. The DMT started to pass. I wasn't going into psychosis, but the entire time I was like, my mind, the only thing I was thinking was I'm about to be crazy for the rest of my life. Wow. I'm about to lose my mind forever. And I would rather die than to be a psycho. Like I would rather die than to be fucking crazy yeah. and not have control of my mind. So that was a huge experience that the, the thing that I decided to take away from that was that um, sometimes things happen in your life that you can't control and you have to learn how to relieve control, right? Yeah. And to be honest, I think I've been able to uh, go on more roller coasters. That's my like biggest fear is heights and falling. Um, it was needles, but I got over that one. So yeah, uh, I hope so. Now it's heights and falling. And yeah. dude, what the fuck is this? Like you're interviewing me. <laughs> nah, it's fine, bro. It's just a conversation. Uh, but uh, it was like heights and falling. And um, now I can go on roller coasters. It's easier for me to go on roller coasters because I, I, I remind myself. Remember that DMT trip? relieve control yeah just let go and allow it to happen whatever happens happens just enjoy the time as it is stop anticipating the future yeah and it made things a little bit it made things a lot easier to be honest yeah and then the heaven experience was the first dmt experience i've ever had and this one was one i was super excited about because i've been waiting years ever since i even like listened to joe rogan talk about it i had been waiting years for dmt to come my way and i was like i'm not gonna go out there and like try to just buy some from i'm gonna like let it I'm going to let it appear in front of me. I'm going to allow it to come to my life, right? Yeah. I want it. And if I, if I find it, I'll get it. But I'm not going to like go out there and like keep asking people like, hey, can, where can I find DMT? Where can I find DMT, right? Yeah. And then it finally showed itself to me. So my friends and I decided to go <laughs> on the top of a mountain in, um, what is that? Joshua Tree. Oh, In no the middle way. of the night, at midnight. We didn't party or anything. We all felt pretty good. We literally made this a spiritual space and all of us decided to do DMT together for the very first time. And I went up first, took those rips and brother, ah, dude, holy shit. We did it in pure silence outside in the night. And I just fell into a hole of darkness and then burst into another dimension. Another dimension of just like, ah, I can't even explain it like a box and then it like it just opened up into like a room and I was like I, I don't know if it was all white or whatever but what I can tell you that I really really do vividly remember is it was multi-dimensional in a way that doesn't is inexplainable I felt the most zen and sincere just peace within me I saw a Buddha with a th like a thousand arms going like this, like, like praying with his hands above his head and his hands open like this. Like he's like, 
you know, allowing things to come to him. And then I saw like a bunch of other, like, I, I just felt like presence. Yeah. Like I felt like I was in the presence of something. And then finally I felt that I, I saw this, this mother, this like female figure that was resting me and like putting me to sleep and calming me down and making me feel like everything was going to be okay. She wasn't speaking English, but I just could, I could, she was just communicating to me somehow saying like, everything's going to be okay. And I was just like, holy fucking shit, bro. This feels literally like heaven right now. Wow. Like, I feel like, like this, like I could see how some people are like, oh, DMT excretes when you die because, and then a bunch of people back then who took DMT, I don't know, bro. Maybe that's where a lot of religion, ideas from religion came from. Maybe these people actually did like rip DMT. I don't know if that's the burning bush or whatever. Or if the burning bush is maybe just some weed or some shit. But <laughs> I think people just ripped DMT before and that's where like ideas of the Buddha came out or yes. or the idea of heaven and hell kind of came out that like this happens when you die or you see these things when you die. Yeah. I, I just like after taking that, I just... I, afterwards I was just like, there's more to life. Like life has meaning. Life has a lot of meaning. Is that what you learned from that trip? Yeah. Yeah. That's I just awesome, felt bro. so much meaning and, uh, I don't know. It definitely helped change my perspective Yeah. in positive ways that are now I can see beneficial for me. Wow. So which DMT trip was the most recent? Was it the purgatory or was it the hell? It was the hell one. That's scary, bro. Yeah. So that's why I haven't done DMT since I've done a half. <laughs> Sorry, I've done a half rip of DMT since then. Really? It wasn't a real breakthrough. I was just testing the waters. Yeah. But um, wow. I, I'm sure that there'll be another time that comes because I do want to do ayahuasca someday. Yeah. Someday, whenever I feel ready. Is that one more <laughs> intense than DMT? Ayahuasca is the tea that is like 12 hours of DMT. 12 you hours. like throw it up and you like shit your brains out. Really? Yeah. Ayahuasca is like the big like ceremony that people will like go away to some shaman for. Wow. Yeah, I actually... Fuck. It might have been that guy that you actually <clears throat> told me about. I th he made a video because I ended up... I forgot that guy. He he has a podcast. What's his name? But he, he made a... He made like a documentary about like this ayahuasca trip for like other people mm -hmm. or numerous people and I ended up watching. That shit's crazy, bro. Like it is like a whole ritual. I think I forgot where they were and in, in what country. Um, but like they had like a whole like ceremony for it. They were laying the people down. Like mm -hmm. it looked very intense. Yeah. At the same time, like for me, like I wouldn't just be like, all right, you know, fuck it, I want to take ayahuasca. Like like yeah. you said, like you it, it's gotta find me. You know? Yeah. I think I think that's the best way to do it. Um, I think instead so of trying to like force something, just let it come to you. Mm -hmm. you know? At least whenever you feel ready. Yeah, I feel like when people force things on themselves, it's it's where it puts your mind in uh, in a stressful place. Yeah, and that, I mean, I don't know. Like the only psychedelics I've done was shrooms. Mm -hmm. Um, and I honestly, I bro, I love I love shrooms because like there's been and it always it always comes at the right time in my life when I do them. Mm -hmm. Um, it like I don't know. It, my my first trip was like the most eye opening for me. I think that also helped like my awakening as well. Um, this what that's what I was saying. Like, there's been like multiple times in my life where like I felt like I had a, an awakening. You know, like I just learned something new about myself, or you know, I learned something new of just whatever. But for me, it was a uh, so it was my first time, and it was at a it was at a rave. It was at Gold Rush in Arizona. And I decided to take, I never take like crazy amounts anytime I do it, but I took a, a gram. Actually, no, I took two grams, which I don't know if that's like, uh, I think I think that's like a normal dosage, right? Or is that like a lot? Uh, I think it's, I would consider it a little bit much, but um, it really depends per person. Because I didn't, I, it, wasn't, it wasn't visual. It was very like mental. It was very mental. And at first when I took it, you know, I started having like this feeling in my stomach that was just like very warm. And then, you know, at first, like I would say like the first 10 minutes of the experience, it was very like, I don't know, I was very like anxious and scary. But once I just 
stop trying to control the trip, that's when it became the most beautiful. And then like every time I do it, I always, I don't know. I feel like I always come out with the same answer. It's just like, be more appreciative about what you have and like the blessings that have been brought upon to your life. And, you know, it's good to just take a step back and, you know, even it doesn't really matter like where you are in your life. Maybe like right now is not the best time in your life. You know, you might be going through something tough, but you know, try to take a step back and just appreciate what you have. You know, even if it's not that much, just appreciate life. Um, that's what it always taught me. I think that's just a beautiful way to to live. Just appreciate everything that comes to you. Um, and that's how I try to live my life now. And it sometimes I get like sometimes it's it's not easy you know like because i i don't know i find myself constantly wanting more 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 like i want and i that's kind of how i've always been and i feel like that's also helped like me with you know how i maneuver in my life but at the same time it's always good to just appreciate what you have because you never know it could be gone tomorrow i think that's a beautiful thing that shrooms can show you because i think dude I, I, I personally believe gratitude is one of the most important things for you to have in your life. Like, if you do not appreciate what you have right now, what is the point of you living life and yeah. enjoying what it is that life has to offer you? I mean, there really is little unless all you care about is, um, I, I don't know, the work that you do or, like, what you put out in there. I mean, if you care about what you put out to other people, I feel like you would still at least have some gratitude for the things that you've done, Yeah. right? But without practicing gratitude... There's no appreciation for the experience, the life that you're living. And I think gratitude is what puts things in a good perspective for us. Yeah. Very <coughs> true. I was a <coughs> I spent a lot of time um uh I, I practice gratitude every single morning because I uh I took this from a special experience, a very important experience I had. But when my best friend passed away, I, that it just it was just a, uh, something that I've never really been close to. Yeah, like I've had family members pass away, but my best friend and I like we lived together. Like we were rooming together. Like I saw him one day, and the next day he was he was just gone forever. We had to like clean up his stuff, and we had to give away some of his things to his family and I don't know. It was a, it was a lot. Um, and I am still consistent, constantly healing from it and it's great. But the one thing that I will never let go is realizing the value of life yeah, and the meaning that he brought to this world because there was I, I, there was no one I knew that was a more loving, more selfless person than him, and yet he was still the one that had to go. So I kind of just I don't want to take life for granted because mm-hmm. I could die any day. My best friends could die any day. Yeah, and um, I he did so many good things for so many people that I want to make sure that I carry on his legacy because nobody even really like he wasn't famous you know nobody like really knew him except for his friends and his family yet he did so many fucking amazing things way more than i ever have dude way more than most people i know he's he literally physically saved countless lives and i just like like, what's the point of life yeah. if it's not to, like, do things like that yeah. for others? To, like, value people like that. What's the point if there's no meaning? Yeah. So I just try to practice gratitude. No, it's very important. For that reason. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm sorry for that, bro. Don't be. But appreciate that. Yeah. But anyways, his legacy lives on. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. Fuck. That's what makes me so blessed to be alive, bro. Yeah. 
I think sometimes we take it for granted. At least I have. I know I have, bro. Like, I'm... I know there's been times in my life where, you know, I definitely should be more appreciative of, you know, what, you know, I've I've been blessed with. It's just sometimes I just find myself in... I don't know, bro. Like, I, I really don't know. I feel like it's something I need to dissect more and something that I really need to look into more about myself. But I just constantly find myself just wanting more and it's like where where is that coming from like i'm trying i want to find the root to that you know and that's that's something i still gotta you know find myself and you know take effort and into looking into it but that's it's, currently why what i'm trying to find out about myself is like why do i constantly find myself wanting more of this like Maybe it is because, like, I, I realize that, you know, life can be taken tomorrow. So it's like I want to make the most out, of, most out of today just in case, like, you know, if I was to die today, I'm like, you know what? I did what I, I, did what I had to do today. You know, I did, you know, something that fulfilled me. Um, but, yeah. I think, I think every – I think most humans to an extent want more. I feel like that is a natural tendency for us as humans. And if you have that tendency, that's a great thing. That means that you're out there fighting. It means you're out there fighting for yourself to survive. You're out there trying to improve. And that's a good fucking thing, bro. And you should be proud of that. You should be happy about that. But I think the other thing about us that makes us human and you know that we have consciousness over is making the choice to have balance. It's to not always be pushing for more, but to also backtrack a little bit and be present to appreciate that of what we have now right. so that our entire life isn't just pushing for more, isn't always just chasing the dopamine rush, but is allowing the serotonin to come through and to appreciate those that we have in our lives now because they could be gone at any second. And I think that's when we can really, really practice that balance, not have to necessarily judge ourselves for always wanting more, yeah. but just realize that when we do, like it's okay but sometimes maybe it's time to pull back a little bit and just be like, like, fuck, I have a great, I live in a great fucking place. Yeah. Like, I have a great fucking life. Yeah. Like, I have a beautiful partner, you know? Yeah. I have a sick-ass dog. This food is fucking good. Yeah. <laughs> this weed is good. Yeah. You know? This McDonald's is hitting. <laughs> this McDonald's is yeah. The shrooms are hitting. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, bro. Yeah. 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 Um, Hundred percent. I think if we could do that, we'll be all right. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. Because I mean, if it wasn't for that, I, like I said, I wouldn't be where I am. But at the same time, there's multiple things. There's multiple things that have led me to this moment right here. People, you know, experiences, everything. Um, I just really got to be thankful for all that. Yeah. I just want everyone to know that you're fucking limitless and you can do whatever the fuck you want in life. Yeah. Never let anyone tell you different, bro. Fuck what anyone has to say. Don't let anyone put the limitations on you. You're limitless. You can do whatever the fuck you want. Seriously. I truly believe that. Because I found myself in a very dark place a couple years back and now I'm living the life that I've always wanted to live. And, you know, I still want more out of life. I still want to change and help more people. You know, I still want a nice car. I still want a nice house. You know, I still want to, you know, create generational wealth for my family. And, you know, I still want to buy my mom a crib. I still want to help my friends out whenever they need help. Just appreciate life because it's, it's not going to be here forever. You know, one day we will be gone. So I think it's a matter of really taking that in and really making something out of it. You're fucking powerful. Facts. Hell yeah. Facts, bro. And with that, let's uh, end the podcast with my yeah. last two questions. Okay. My first question that I always ask everybody is, what would you do right now if you were to die tomorrow? If I was to die tomorrow, yeah. I'd spend today with my family. Fuck yeah, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, uh, I think that's exactly what I'd do. I'd spend, yeah, I'd spend time with my loved ones. Like if I knew, if I woke up this morning, I was like, all right, I'm going to die tomorrow. I would just text all my loved ones, be like, yo, I'm dying tomorrow. Close to the crib. Let's have like a cookout before I die and shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh, okay. This is a question I want to ask you. Just, what would be the last song you'd listen to if you were to die? The last song? The last song. Oh, 
Mine would be Inner Bloom. Oh, man, Inner Bloom. Yes. That's such a good one. Yeah. That was actually uh, Inner Bloom. Um, Lane Nate's remix of Inner Bloom was like my special song for a really? long, long time that I would listen to in any spiritual space I was in. And I actually listened to it during one DMT trip too. Wow. So, um, but uh, maybe mine would be a live like you were dying by yeah. Tim McGraw. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't even like a dream. That's some college station shit right there. Yeah, that is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, fuck, I don't know, man. Yeah. Um, Dope, bro. I appreciate you having me on the pod, dude. This was awesome. Yeah, dude. Yeah, it was sick as shit. Do a fucking tat appointment now. Yeah. Damn, bro. Time flies. Holy it shit. It does. That's the thing. Is like, I, that's why I love having these pods with my boys. Yeah, bro. Just nonstop, bro. We could go for hours. I know we, we could. really could. Like, yeah. if I didn't have this tat appointment, I feel like we, we'd go for another couple hours. Yeah. Facts. <laughs> Seriously. Facts, facts. Seriously. Okay. Last question was, uh, if you could have any superpower in the world, what would it be? To fly. Oh, Yeah. We had this combo. Yeah, bro. To fly. I like that just solve all my problems. We decided that Jerm and I both want the same thing to like be in any place at any time. Yeah. But at least this guy wants to be along for the ride. Yeah. I just wanted to teleport. You just teleport. <laughs> I want it now. Fuck. <laughs> That's awesome. I need to change bro. my perspective. I need to enjoy the process as well. Yeah. I think flying is just, I don't know. That's why like if I was an animal, I'd want to be a hawk. Oh, that'd be you sick. Because like I don't know. I feel like, damn, I'm sad today. Let me just fly. Okay, I'm happy now. That's sick. Yeah. That's sick. <laughs> I want to be a gorilla. Hell yeah, bro. <laughs> I just Fuck. want to fucking have huge orbs. Yeah, no, that'd be dope. That'd All right. Be dope. All right, brother. Where can we find you? Uh, Jeremy W. Foster on Instagram. TikTok, I don't really use, but it's a boy named Germ. Shout out, John. Uh, YouTube, Jeremy Foster. And yeah, you can also find me in California in the Valley. Yeah. Hell yeah. Find us in California, bros. Hell yeah. Come say hi. For sure. What's that? Come say hi. All right, sick. Oh, uh, yeah, if you guys want to support the podcast, the best non-cost way to support the podcast is to rate us a five stars on Spotify and a five stars on Apple Podcasts. It means the fucking world. I'm seeing the, the amount of ratings going up. It's a 4.9, which means some people rated us probably a zero. And hey, I'm cool, cool with that. But cool. all you guys out there that have been supporting the podcast means the world to me and because this is my greatest passion. It okay. really is. Even when bodybuilding is over, I want to keep doing this and Fuck learning yeah, from sick-ass people. Thank you guys again. Love you guys. Thanks for listening. Hell yeah. Germs. The Germinator. Peace. The world is yours. The world is yours. <laughs>